Welcome to Wayne's World Studio. My name is Wayne. And today we are really fortunate to meet with Nina Park for some of her work. Amazing artist. Uh, we're going to showcase some of her work and we're going to ask her how she started and what inspired her work. I'd like to know about how did you start it? Well, I began just uh, photographing friends. Mm -hmm. I have several um, young women that are close to me, family, friends, and uh, they were my muses for a number of years. And um, at one point I wanted to create a deck of tarot cards and I was going to photograph these uh, so I began to work with a makeup artist because I wanted them to be styled in a certain way. And that opened up another whole um, area of fantasy shooting. And uh, the first makeup artist I was working with is uh, Lauren um, Marner Thomas uh, out of Phoenix. And she, I made this book for her. These are all the, the um, images that we did together. Great. That's over, how many years ago with that one? Yeah. This was probably over the last 10 years. Oh, yes. And she came up here a few times to Vancouver as well. So whenever we get together, we do something creative. And then that just began to... Um, create interest uh, for other designers and stylists who wanted to do something like that. So I, I know you're not a photographer at first, you were more into uh, oil painting, uh, more mixed media, and got into photography, and that really got you inspired doing fashion work. I noticed it's all female, is there any male model you work with, oh, or this no, is kind of... I do, I work with men as well. I noticed your work is really fantasy. Is that kind of idea you're going for, going to that? Well, it's... I am very influenced by the Pre-Raphaelite painters, mm -hmm. and so I think that whatever you do, you know, whatever kind of art that you have done in your life, it translates into whatever media you do next, right? So. And it seems that I lean towards fantasy or surrealist um, imagery. Want to tell us about your maybe workflow? How do you think about uh, the model? You meet the model. How do you think about, about the shoot, the wardrobe? What would work for her? Is well, there a thought behind that? It depends. I mean, if a model contacts me and wants to do something, then um, when I produce the the shoot, I will contact either a, a stylist who will bring wardrobe or work with a designer. And so the garments tend to influence what the feeling of the shoot is going to be, if it's a period style or if it's um, more modern. And um, I like to bring together a team of different creative people, either uh, people who are designing clothes, doing the styling, makeup artists. Mm -hmm. I ended up learning and doing my own hairstyling because it's not always possible to find someone who can do what I want. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. really elaborate and big um, styles. Mm -hmm. I noticed you have some really big print. Can you tell us about the carbon print? They're really unique, and mm -hmm. only two places around the world can print this. Yes. Uh, I'm sure this is going to be well, interesting for people to want color it. carbon printing is only done um, by two, two families in the world. One is uh, the Frison family in France, which printed these and several others that I have. Um, and the other company is Art and Soul out of Seattle. Um, the unique thing about color carbon printing is that it's the only archival way to make a color print. And they will, according to laboratory tests, last for a thousand years without degrading. Um, 
unless of course they're in a fire or a flood or something of that sort but um, I would do all of my work as carbon prints if I could afford it they're they're really lovely have you been showcased your work in gallery I have I um, represented by two galleries one is method gallery in Scottsdale Arizona and the other one is Artemisia in uh, Chicago area and occasionally I take part in group shows um, I was just in the Hirschberger theater um, group show called balance I was the featured artist there in Arizona wow. looks like I do a lot of traveling I like to travel but I don't do much traveling lately mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, this is all still media. Have you planned maybe doing a, um, a maybe a moving picture one or film like that? You know, I that would be? love to do video, and I've done some experiments with video, but um, it's it's interesting that you ask because there's certain layering effects that I like to do with still images, and I would love to do that with a um, a short film. Yeah. So maybe one day I'll have time for that. Um, I'm going to talk about your metallic print. Can you tell us about the metallic print in your oh, uh, well, place there? Because the frisson prints are not very affordable. And it, the, the bad thing about them is that I need to sell them for quite a lot more than I would any other kind of print. And to educate the public, for them to understand why that is a better way to go, and how it's more of a valuable piece for them to own. Most people don't want to go for a $10,000 print, right? Mm -hmm. So I often, when I do a gallery exhibition, I will use uh, either Kodak or Agfa uh, metallic uh, paper. Mm -hmm. And with my particular kind of color work, I find that it adds a nice depth to the work. It just gives it a slight sheen. Yes. yes. Yeah. I find metallic print, it, it has a different look than a fine art. It has a mm -hmm. different, I think it's every picture have a different uh, use for it. You right. Know, on that one there. And can you tell us about your magazine? You've been sure. published a yeah. lot of magazine, I know. I have. I, um, I started working with, um, with Vigori magazine. Uh, the editor, uh, Judy Lake, she's a lovely woman. Um, and I've been in Vigori a lot over the last few years. Um, she's, uh, she's doing fashion mainly. Mm -hmm. It's fashion oriented. Um, and then I began to work with Mamie. Lord Algi is the editor, and and he's he always gives me a cover. And I love his style too. He's he's fashion based. Mm -hmm. And um, I work with Dark Beauty quite a lot. Um, Topher Adam is the editor. And he is more fantasy oriented, but mm -hmm. also fashion. He's also a designer. Wow. And then I've been in you know, various other magazines just here and there randomly, um, Passion and um, various, various ones that I just maybe will, will take part in once or twice. And then um, a little more than a year ago, I started um, Mirror Magazine with um, with a friend of mine, um, Joe David. When we were both in our 20s, we did a small magazine in Seattle called City Kids. And it was a full page visual ads that were all about the fun places to go in the city, like shops and mm -hmm. restaurants and so forth. And it was a press run and it was just given away free. It was very thin. And of course, we didn't have a backer, and we just barely, you know, made it each time, and we didn't make any money on it. And so many years later, now I reconnected with him, 
because he's he's married, has a family, and I lived in other places, and so I did a shoot with him. It was for Helena Hawthorne, and we did it at his house. Like I, I contacted him and and said, you know, I. I would love to to do this um, this shoot for a designer that has sort of a a Victorian feel, mm -hmm. and I knew that he was well connected in the art community in Seattle, and asked him if he knew of a place where we could shoot. And uh, he got back to me, and he said, "Well, how about at my house?" <laughs> and so the nice thing about his house is that he has an amazing art collection. Mm -hmm. A lot of contemporary painters that I love, uh, like Mark Ryden and uh, Laurie Early. And so we did this wonderful kind of Victorian fantasy shoot, and the models were next to, um, to the paintings. Like this is Marion Peck as the wife of Mark Ryden. And, um, this is Laurie Early. And uh, then it was followed by a submission of Mark Ryden's work. And um, after that shoot, anyway, um, <laughs> I, I brought him some of these magazines that I'd been in, and I said, well, what do you think about doing a magazine ourselves because now with print on demand it's possible to do what we always had wanted to do when we were young and he had never heard of print on demand and he was surprised at the quality of it yes. um, because in general the color is good and the paper is thick and it's it's um, it's of course a little more expensive than you would get a uh, press run but you don't have all that money up front to put out, you know, and um, so he agreed, and uh, he's the editor chief, and I am the one who kind of contacts the artists and and um, curates the issues. Um, and he used to teach at Cornish, which is a pretty famous art school in Seattle and he knew in design so in the beginning he was doing all the layout work yeah. and now we have a team of interns that are helping us it's all a volunteer staff so this last year that has kept me very busy yeah well the magazine definitely has uh, your style in there you know the painting will you feel well the nice thing about um, mirror is that Every artist who is featured, we do a cover for them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, this is a Mark Ryden cover. And I had another cover. See, I had that cover for Surreal. Um, and, and what the reason is because it's nice to have your work in a magazine, but it's so much more useful for the artist as a promotional tool if they're on <coughs> excuse me, if they're on the cover. Mm -hmm. you know So we always do uh, anywhere from nine to 12 covers, depending on how many artists are in each edition. So I I did a one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, workshop with Richard Sullivan, and he's in New Mexico, and he pretty much revived a lot of the alt process uh, printing techniques by um, creating the chemicals that are needed to do those processes. And one of the things that uh, wasn't possible to find anymore was uh, carbon printing paper and um, it's he he um, redeveloped the process and so he created these rolls of carbon paper um, that made it possible to do this kind of printing um, I wanted to do them on this art paper 
<laughs> which is not something he had much ex experience with. He was usually printing on a slick paper. So we had um, a range of problems. Uh, I would say maybe one out of every three turned out because it's, it's quite a long process uh, to create them. Um, you get a lot of bubbles. In order to make the art paper possible to print on, you have to first coat it with layers of gelatin. And then you expose the carbon paper with the contact print. Um, these are all, the negatives have to be the same size. Oh. It's just uh, burned with an arc burner and then applied to the paper that has the gel. Um, so you're using paper uh, as an emotion. Right. Yeah. And um, so, as you can see, there's some irregularities, but those can all be uh, fixed um, with a, a brush, an ink brush. And a lot of them were too dark. Um, but again, the carbon process, these prints are, I mean, they will last for hundreds of years. I mean, they're very, I would say this is probably one of the most perfect prints that I got. There's a little bit of bubbling at the edge, but it has good tonality. Can you tell us about the carbon print? For some of us are not familiar with the carbon print. So you, you well, put the gelatin onto the print, so the camera itself is using this side. Onto of the, the paper. Onto the paper. You, so you, you paint it on like a wet gelatin mixture, and it, you have to get it just the right uh, consistency. And um, the carbon paper, it's just a roll of, of, uh, of paper that has layers and layers of, of carbon um, built up on it. Um, it's, you know, carbon is the same like what we have in our lead the pencils, right? Mm -hmm. And um, then you take the, uh, the negative, which has to be the size of the image that you want, and you, you, you place that over the carbon paper in an arc burner, and it, it um, then has to be hung and dried and um, then processed and uh, adhered to the paper that you have. Um, anyway, it's, it's, it's quite a long procedure work, yeah. and you never know what you're going to get. But if, if I had um, access to the materials and a place to, to work, I would probably do more of this. I, I love all processes of all kinds. It's hand on, definitely. Yeah. Now this is a, a platinum print and I did a one-on-one -on -one workshop with uh, Patrick Alt who was known as one of the, um, the best platinum printers of our time. I mean, he was just in incredible um, and a wonderful photographer as well. Um, he lived in California. He just passed this last year. Um, but uh, I was fortunate to be able to, to work with him. And these are, are um, also, uh, you know, some of them are too dark, but they have a nice tonality. And then he also was teaching me how to do the um, uh, cyanotype. And basically what cyanotype is, is the same process they use for making blueprints. Mm -hmm. And um, someone just told me recently that there's some kind of uh, toner that you can use with them and it, it makes them um, not blue anymore, but more of a black. I haven't, I haven't done any any more of them since since I worked with Patrick. But here you can see the the difference of the platinum and the sienna type using the same negative. I think the left one feels a little more like a um, cartoonish a bit. It yeah, like it's interesting, isn't it? How color can make a difference. And then here is the. Uh, 
receive negative the carbon and the sienna. I would say the carbon is probably one of the l most luscious kind of uh, feelings you can get. The depth of it is is quite beautiful. Like even in the shadows, there's a lot of of clarity. Uh, did you mention Charles Ancien or? Yes, yes. This is this is work that I did years ago um, before I did digital. So a lot of uh, duplicates here. This is a platinum print again in the Sienna. So you can see. Yes. I would say um, my favorite alt process would be carbon. I like the, the look of it best. <laughs> 